The current theory of how a muscle cell contracts is the sliding filament theory, which states that the contraction of a muscle cell occurs as the thin filaments slide past the thick filaments. During contraction, the sarcomere shortens and the thin and thick filaments overlap to a greater degree. Your goals for learning are to explore the molecular structure and functional features of the thin and thick filaments, to understand the sequence of events in a single crossbridge cycle, to examine the sequence of events in multiple crossbridge cycling. Here's what you need to know. The anatomy of a skeletal muscle cell. The arrangement of myofilaments within a skeletal muscle cell. The events occurring at the neuromuscular junction. Definitions of thick filament, thin filament, sarcomere, binding site, terminal cisternae, ATP, and action potential. To review the anatomy of a skeletal muscle cell, the arrangement of myofilaments, or the events occurring at the neuromuscular junction, click a link button. If you use a link button, you can return to the page you started from by clicking the return button. To see definitions of terms, click the bold red words. The sliding filament theory of how a skeletal muscle contracts involves the activities of five different molecules plus calcium ions. The five molecules include myosin, actin, tropomyosin, troponin, and ATP. In addition to these five molecules, calcium ions are also involved in the process of muscle contraction. Now we will explore how each of these molecules participates in the contraction of a sarcomere. Click a thick filament to examine its structure. The first molecule we will look at is the protein myosin. In skeletal muscle cells, the myosin molecules are bundled together to form the thick filaments. Click the thick filament to see an individual myosin molecule. The shape of an individual myosin molecule is similar to a golf club with two heads. Myosin has several important functional features. The head, or cross bridge, has the ability to move back and forth. The flexing movement of the myosin head provides the power stroke for muscle contraction. Click the head of the myosin molecule to see it move. Another feature of the myosin molecule is the hinge portion of the linear tail. This allows vertical movement so that the cross bridge can bind to actin, the thin filament. Click the tail to see this movement. Click anywhere on the myosin molecule to see both activities. The cross bridge has two important binding sites. One site specifically binds ATP, adenosine triphosphate, a high energy molecule. Notice the position of the cross bridge. This is called the low energy conformation. Click the ATP molecule to see it bind to the cross bridge. The binding of ATP transfers energy to the myosin cross bridge as ATP is hydrolyzed into ADP and inorganic phosphate. Click the ATP molecule to transfer energy to myosin. Now the cross bridge is in its high energy conformation. The second binding site on the myosin cross bridge has a strong attraction for binding to actin, as we'll see later in the cross bridge cycling animation.
Now that we've examined the structure of thick filaments, let's look more closely at thin filaments. Thin filaments are composed of three molecules, actin, tropomycin, and troponin. Click a thin filament to examine the arrangement of these three molecules. Actin is the major component of the thin filament. The actin portion of the thin filament is composed of actin subunits twisted into a double helical chain. Each actin subunit has a specific binding site to which the myosin crossbridge binds. The regulatory protein tropomyosin is also part of the thin filament. Tropomyosin entwines around the actin. In the unstimulated muscle, the position of the tropomyosin covers the binding sites on the actin subunits and prevents myosin crossbridge binding. To expose the binding sites for binding with myosin, the tropomyosin molecule must be moved aside. This is facilitated by the presence of a third molecular complex called troponin. Troponin is attached and spaced periodically along the tropomyosin strand. Troponin by itself is not able to move the tropomyosin away from the binding sites. This process requires calcium ions. After an action potential, calcium ions are released from the terminal cisternae and bind to troponin. This causes a conformational change in the tropomyosin-troponin complex, dragging the tropomyosin strands off the binding sites. Click the terminal cisternae to release calcium ions and see this effect. Before seeing how all these components work together in a complete crossbridge cycle, click the link buttons to review any of the organic molecules or calcium ions. The five organic molecules and the calcium ions function together in a coordinated manner to cause the thin filament to slide past the thick filament. We will first show an animation of a single crossbridge cycle and then describe this process step by step on the following pages. To see the entire process of crossbridge cycling, click the terminal cisternae. As you've just seen, crossbridge cycling is a continuous event. For the purposes of easier understanding, however, let's break it down into six separate steps. 1. The influx of calcium, triggering the exposure of binding sites on actin. 2. The binding of myosin to actin. 3. The power stroke of the crossbridge that causes the sliding of the thin filaments. 4. The binding of ATP to the crossbridge, which results in the crossbridge disconnecting from actin. 5. The hydrolysis of ATP, which leads to the re-energizing and repositioning of the crossbridge. And 6. The transport of calcium ions back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The first step is exposing actin's binding sites. When a muscle cell is stimulated, the action potential brings about the release of calcium ions from the terminal cisternae of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The calcium ions flood into the cytosol and bind to the troponin, causing a change in conformation of the troponin-tropomyosin complex. This conformational change exposes the binding sites on actin. Click the terminal cisternae to start the process.
When a binding site on actin is exposed, an energized cross bridge can bind to it. Click the energized cross bridge to begin the binding. The binding of myosin to actin brings about a change in the conformation of the cross bridge, resulting in the release of ADP and inorganic phosphate. At the same time, the cross bridge flexes, pulling the thin filament inward toward the center of the sarcomere. This movement is called the power stroke. Click the energized cross bridge to see this activity. The chemical energy of ATP has been transformed into the mechanical energy of a muscle cell contraction. In order to disconnect the cross bridge from actin, an ATP molecule must bind to its site on the myosin cross bridge. Click on the ATP molecule to disconnect the cross bridge. The release of the myosin cross bridge from actin triggers the hydrolysis of the ATP molecule into ADP and inorganic phosphate. Energy is transferred from ATP to the myosin cross bridge, which returns to its high energy conformation. Click the bound ATP to trigger hydrolysis. In the final step, calcium is actively transported from the cytosol back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum by ion pumps. As the calcium is removed, the troponin-tropomyosin complex again covers the binding sites on actin. Click a calcium ion to see this process. The active transport of calcium involves specialized ion pumps in the membrane of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. These pumps must be energized by ATP. Click the calcium ion pump to see active transport. To see the entire process of cross-bridge cycling, click the terminal cisternae. In contracting muscle, we see multiple cross-bridge cycles. Here are four cross-bridges which cycle in a coordinated manner. Note that during a contraction, all cross-bridges are neither bound nor disconnected at the same time. Click the terminal cisternae to begin the process. In this view, several myosin and actin filaments are interacting to demonstrate the sliding filament theory of muscle contraction. Notice that although the sarcomere shortens, 
the length of each myofilament does not change. However, watch as the width of the H zone changes. Click a thin filament to start the contraction. We've seen that ATP plays a key role in the contraction of muscle. Before we study muscle metabolism, let's review ATP's role in 1. Energizing the power stroke of the myosin cross bridge 2. Disconnecting the myosin cross bridge from the binding site on actin at the conclusion of a power stroke 3. Actively transporting calcium ions into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Click the link buttons to review these roles. Here's a summary of what we've covered. The sequence of events in a single cross bridge cycle includes 1. The influx of calcium triggering the exposure of binding sites on actin. 2 the binding of myosin to actin. 3. The power stroke of the cross bridge that causes the sliding of the thin filaments. 4. The binding of ATP to the cross bridge, which results in the cross bridge disconnecting from actin. 5. The hydrolysis of ATP, which leads to the re-energizing and repositioning of the cross bridge. And 6. The transport of calcium ions back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Multiple cross bridge cycling is coordinated sequentially to prevent all cross bridges from either being connected or disconnected at the same time. To test your knowledge, click the quiz button to go to the self quiz.